Thanks for tuning in for segment four of our suicide prevention training today. So this one is going to be full of resources to be able to help. Uh, so we've covered things like ACT, to ask, to care, and to treat. And so these resources fall into play more specifically during that treat uh, step of the process in making sure that we are getting those individuals to people who can provide the assistance that they need. One of the things that uh, we'll talk about today is, of course, you know, where are those resources? Who can we go to? Fleet and Family Support Center is there. Uh, if you are currently underway or deployed, don't hesitate to reach out. Uh, in that crisis, obviously, you can't walk in. Right now, we can't walk in, but we are available by phone. We have our sale coordinators. We have our counselors. Uh, with phones on standby, ready to go at a moment's notice. We also have a Military One Source that is available, a great resource that is available 24 hours a day, seven days a week, 365 days a year. A resource that you do have access to right now, if you're not on land uh, with us here, is you know the chaplain. Um, if you are on a ship with one, uh, if you are in a command that has a chaplain embedded, please don't hesitate to reach out to them. They are a wealth of information uh, and they are there to assist with anything that may be going on. Medical is also available. Again, here if you're in San Diego, Balboa, is open, is ready to go. We also have resources like the, uh, the MOOD, so our mental health outreach uh, and operational division that is there. Uh, and then, you know, some other resources to reach out to through the Suicide Prevention uh, Lifeline, uh, which I just said have the number up for, and here it is again in case you guys need it always somebody there to reach out to, to talk with. And some other resources include uh, Courage to Call. So this is a resource that is uh, unique to us. It is um, kind of an offshoot of 211. Maybe you've heard of them. Uh, but if you call 211 and hit option four, it takes you to Courage to Call, which is a resource for our service members, our families, and veterans. So if there is a moment that somebody needs somebody to talk to, you can give them a call. Military One Source, Fleet and Family, any of us are available to reach out to and provide support in those times. With that, I've, I've spent some time to focusing on what are you going to do to take care of yourself? Right, so how are you building that resiliency? And I want you to make sure that you know those resources as well. Many of them are the same. Reaching out to Fleet and Family. We have a resource for everything. We have a program for everything. Um, and if it's not, we'll make sure that we get you connected to the right person. So reach out if there's something that's going on, if there's just a simple question that you think may could turn into something different, let us know. Military One Source is also there to be able to provide support at any point in time. So maybe it's after Fleet and Family's working hours or on weekends or federal holidays, right? When, when our offices are not open, Military One Source is there. With that being said, there are some things that a lot of us are doing already, right? That are embedded as a part of our routines, that are things that we just do whether it is working out, uh, it could be doing any type of aerobic exercise, whatnot, building up those uh, endorphins, pumping them up, uh, because those are things that in turn, as they are released, they, you know, they make us feel good, right? So something making sure that you've got that exercise or whatever it may be that you have. Um, eating right, you know, a lot of what we eat 
uh, plays a role in our mood, as I'm sure everyone is aware. Um, but also thinking about, too, you know, what what is my purpose, right? What do I enjoy doing? Oftentimes, it's someone who's lost that sense of purpose that is really struggling. And maybe that's what we need to help that person find. Uh, so if the person enjoys playing sports, maybe they can join a team. Um, MWR has a lot of teams or will have a lot of teams once we're all back together again. Um, but it could also be something like, you know, maybe they decide they want to coach. Uh, or like I said, join that team that's going to be able to provide them some type of, of purpose. It could be something like, you know, joining a particular group seeing what their interests are. If they like to hike, maybe that's what they do. They find a group that, that goes on hikes. Uh, it could be working or volunteering at the Humane Society or the, the many nonprofits that we have available to our service members and their families. Maybe that sounds like something that you're interested in, right? Kind of doing something to build us up, to make us feel good. Uh, and so don't hesitate as well. If you need suggestions, we have a lot of different suggestions, uh, resources available for you as well for that to make sure that we are, you know, being our best self, that we are working to not just survive this life, but to grow and thrive as well. So with that being said, one of the the final things that I'll leave you with is at the very beginning, I talked about that one small act, right? And how it doesn't have to be anything big. And I can tell you from personal experience that it is the simplest of things, right? That can prevent someone from going to the extreme, if you will, um, so approximately 10 years ago, um, I had a moment in life where life just kept throwing me curveball after curveball after curveball. And quite honestly, I felt a lot of those different warning signs that I talked about. I was trapped in a horrible uh, relationship. I was isolated. I was kept from family. I was the whole story um, is just, is not good. Um, I was teaching at the time and, you know, it was this, I had to, to be on all the time and there was no opportunity to get away from anything. There was no opportunity to release anything. Uh, as a matter of fact, my fellow teachers had no idea what was going on behind the scenes. Uh, and it wasn't until a very close friend of mine actually reached out and said, hey, like, I need you to actually do me a favor. Um, so it was kind of cool how she posed it. She's like, you know, doctor says after the surgery, I really just need to go and walk. And that's going to be great for my recovery. But I really need you to come with me you know, walk with me, be that person to kind of hold her accountable. Um, so I was like, okay, well, how can I tell her no, right? Um, little did I know she was asking that question without asking that question. Um, and so our simple walks around the mall at the time led into talking about what was going on allowed me to open up in a safe space and share with her not only what was going on, but how I was feeling and um, allowed her to help me not only express that, but get connected with resources that could help me with my situation and what was going on there. So I am here again to tell you that without the small act, um, I don't know that I could be sitting here today talking with you about the different parts of um, this brief. So please don't worry that it has to be something big. I strongly, 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 strongly encourage you guys to do those small things. It could be just, how's your day? 
how are you doing? I've noticed this. Do you want to talk? The simple things can truly be the things that save someone else. So do them. Think about them. Thank you for taking the opportunity and for going out on that limb and offering yourself as the person that will do that for someone else. As someone who has been on both sides now. Thank you.